Hello, Narvel. Oh, welcome. Hello, Morgan. Hey, Long. I hope the reveal... Oh, it's 11. Hopefully it drops right now. Hello, reader. How do you know it's Warwick? Uh, because they told us it's Warwick. Here. So this is what I'm refreshing, and as you can see, they say Warwick reveal November 4th. So we already know that uh, it is going to be Warwick today. And often they drop something at 11 or, yeah, 11 my time, but sometimes it's 12. Yeah, they revealed who the champions are coming. But today we should get, like, the actual champion card, his star powers, um, some of the cards he's revealing with potentially, maybe a... YouTube video that's kind of showing his cards in action like we got for Fiddlesticks and like we used to get with Champions. YouTube video is out. Okay, I'm just not seeing it on their page. Oh, there it is. No views, it says. Okay. Let's grab this here. And... Uh, for a moment, I'm just going to drop my camera and we can watch this together. Also, I'll probably watch it. We'll watch it without pausing and then we'll go back and look at everything. level of animation. Alright, will they show anything else? Okay, doesn't look like it. Let's... Oh, okay. So we'll go through and look at that. Let's quickly refresh here and just see if they dropped his star powers or anything. They might be staggering the release. Okay. So let's go through and look here. Okay, so he has Jury Rig, Boom Crew Rookie, Clump of Wumps, Get Excited, Sump Dredger, Used Salesman, Castic Rift, and Chem Punk Shredder. Oh. So that is a little sad. I kind of thought Warwick, they were going to make a support package around him or like add some cards but we are just getting all classic boom or all classic uh p and z cards which is a little sad yeah hmm that's a little disappointing but let's look at warwick so three costs so that's fun with his constellation you could drop him round one <laughs> he has the dog keyword uh, he is a PNZ champion. Uh, let's actually... Goodness, let's mute that and let's go for... Oh, they're actually showing there's a Warwick adventure. So Warwick has a one-star adventure. So they're showing us that we're getting more challenges. Let's look at the actual card. So here it's better view. So three cost, dog, PNZ, play, I strike a damaged enemy. So that's a fun effect for one you get to choose who you're striking. So it can be like a better Stalker's Blade. You just have to be able to damage them first. So that's a fun mechanic for trying to damage someone first. That would make the like Caustic Rift we saw earlier not too bad. Uh, the Warwick Adventures positioned in Zaun. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. You think Mbessa gets it all? That, that could be possible, which is a little disappointing because I thought a support package around Warwick would be really, really cool. Uh, but... Level up, you've dealt damage 12 times this game. 
So he's going to be super easy to level because you this doesn't even say damage enemies. It's just you've dealt damage 12 times. So that should be pretty fast. Like if you drop him with a ravenous Hydra, you could level him up super fast. Yeah, no keywords either. That is interesting. Let's look at his level up condition. All right, so he goes to a 5-4 stat line. Now he gets quick attack. Uh, play, I strike a damaged enemy. Round end, I strike a random damaged enemy. That actually is pretty fun. I do like champions that... Or I do like strike effects. I think it's pretty great. So him being able to just get tons of strikes off, you play him, he strikes, and then round end, he's also getting a strike off. So you're going to have tons of removal built in with Warwick. You really just kind of have to try to go for a lot of effects that deal that deal damage to enemies. So with that in mind, let's go back and take a look. So boom crew, that hits the Nexus. The Caustic Rift will be really nice, and the Chempunk Shredder. Also, they're showing us the items because he's level 30. So some of these have two, but like Caustic Rift, this has the upgrade that it buffs up your whole board. And this, I think it's like if you have flow, it goes down to a two cost. So this can hit the entire enemy board, so that's not too bad. Chempunk Shredder. So that's another one that can hit the whole board. So you have you have two ways to do that. Seems interesting. Wasn't Chempunk Chem Punk a five cost? Yes, but you see it has the uh, ancient coin here. So it getting that one cost reduction. Get Excited is going to do a little bit of extra damage. Boom Crew has draw on it. Jury Rig with Invoke isn't too bad. Do know that with the Invoke, you actually have to play the Jury Rig. But it's a nice way to generate more cards. So I will say, a little disappointing that... Like, yes, we're not going to get voiceover for him, which does suck. And I'm also a little disappointed. I thought he was going to get some support cards added with him i didn't think a lot but i thought like two to three the fact that none of them that is a little bit sad as far as a champion though three cost solid stat line i think his play effect will be fun uh he doesn't have any keywords baseline but then having removal of every like round end it's round end right yeah round end i strike a random damaged enemy i think this can be pretty fun and it's going to be a different unique play style i think for people like me that really like strikes and this is kind of a champion built purposely for that i think it'll be pretty fun yeah he doesn't his level up animation this is just going to be like the generic level up animation that everyone gets for the time being So hopefully his constellation is built around getting strikes off. Like if he had maybe his four star being Trifarian, that'd be hilarious. I feel like that might be too strong to just give to someone, but Trifarians are your five cost champions immediately or units strike someone. Okay, yeah, so I don't think this video necessarily shows us too much. We are going to have to wait uh, for them to drop. Let's check here. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, I'm going to quickly check their uh, Twitter or X account. Yeah, nothing nothing there yet. Warwick Relic, Ravenous Hydra. Yes, Ravenous Hydra is going to be very good for Warwick. That is definitely something you're going to want to grab. Fury on Warwick is great. Yeah, that's... He's going to be definitely a champion you want to focus on the champion themselves maybe also check reddit uh sure i'll see if there is anything what they normally do is they stagger releases yeah all we're seeing is the uh the warwick trailer okay so this is yeah interesting how do we fix the stock loot uh we wait for the patch so
so jury rig let's i'm gonna work on getting this constructed in game so we can just take a look at all these so i'll just make a quick little deck for him They announced they stopped doing custom level up animations and voiceover. Yeah, we'll we'll have to see. I feel like it'll be Feast of Fan Min depending on star powers. It is possible. All right, let's get some of those. All right, so an ad is going to drop. Don't worry, I'm just working on getting the, the deck put together, and then we'll go over it. So go ahead, go grab a uh, drink or go to the bathroom and do anything while this uh, drops here. And we're just going to be putting together his deck with the actual cards in game so we can take a look at them all. Yeah, it's a very interesting deck with a lot of discard synergy built in there. This is kind of giving me somewhat uh, Vi vibes. Although I think I think they're really just trying to go for a full like Zon feel because so they're trying to like RP with the, the deck more. All right, so we have the deck uh, pulled up here. All right, so we have Jury Rig, when played or discard some of scrap, scrap Scuttler. Hmm. Yeah, this is... This is an interesting one. You have a lot of discard synergy. I feel like the biggest thing they did for a lot of these, the kind of the main goal was just get Zonite units. Just beginning my leveling of Swain through Fizz when he started streaming. <laughs> Level one, four star times two. Does not do that well. Need to get him up more definitely. Yeah, it doesn't seem that interesting like Vi, but Vi's rework um, just worked in game. Okay, yeah. All right, so a couple good things. You have the Caustic Rift. Flow, I cost two less. Deal one to all enemies. This can be a great way to level up your Warwick by damaging a bunch of units. And then also, you want to be damaging units so he can get his strikes off. So the Caustic Rift is good for that. Also, this is a card that we have not seen in anyone else's deck. So a new card right there. Uh, we do have Kempunk Shredder. I don't think this is in anyone's deck. And this does get cost reduction to go down to a 4 cost. So at least it's a little bit more playable. And then play deal 1 to all enemies. So again, good that we're able to get something that can damage enemy units to try to again level up our uh warwick also the fact that these are the two most expensive isn't that bad because you really want to have damaged units to both level up your warwick but also so he gets strikes off so dropping these in the later game to just ping the entire enemy board is not bad i think warwick is going to be one of those great options for the monthly challenges where it's like all units have either one health or you have uh, damaged units at the end of the round die. Strike the enemy mechanic, mechanic sounds cool. Lack of uh, level up animation makes me not really care about this at all. It is definitely a bit sad. So yeah, Jury Rig. Plater discards some of Scrap Scuttler. It's kind of... I mean, it's a burst speed blocker, which can be nice. Uh, Boom Crew, this is dealing damage to the Nexus which I don't think you really have Nexus Damage Synergy. Uh, Clump of Wumps. When someone create a Mushroom Cloud in hand. Again, this seems really random to be in here. Get excited. More Discard Synergy. Okay, I guess. Like, it's giving you some removal. Yeah, it's... It's another instance of damage. That is true. The Boom Crew Rookie, the damage to the Nexus. And I guess that's the same thing with the Puff Caps. 
since it's just damage to the Nexus, that will work out for Warwick's level up. So there is that. That is a good call, Rivi. Because, yeah, you don't have to necessarily damage units. Uh, so some treasure again. More discard synergy. A little sad because I think this is in multiple other decks. I think this is in both Janna as well as uh, Jinx. Used Salesman. I'm guessing that, again, this will just be good because it's more iterations of damage. So this is just helping you get uh, your Warwick leveled. So I guess it's good for that. Also, I mean, these can also work as blockers. It's giving you two casks. Each one of these casks is doing two damage. Because it's damaging your Nexus and the enemy one. So just dropping this card by default is giving you four towards Warwick's level up, which is a third of the way or a fourth of the way there. As I believe his level up's 12. So it's it's interesting. Some of these, yeah, they do actually make sense a little bit more. But the discard synergy at the moment seems a little bit random. I'm not seeing a point for it. I mean, it's okay. We gained some extra draw. Not bad for some of these. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting, interesting deck, definitely. Right, let's again see if they dropped his powers or anything at all. All right, not seen it, but let's go ahead and uh, look again here. So here we have, oh goodness. So Warwick, play a strike an enemy, and yeah, you've dealt damage 12 times, 12 or more. So this doesn't say like damage to units. It doesn't say damage to enemies. It doesn't say nexus damage. It's just damage. So any instances of damage will uh, definitely help out. So even that next Nexus damage from like Puff Caps, those Caustic Casts, uh, the Boom Crew Rookie, that is all contributing. So you should be able to level them up pretty quickly. And yeah, 4-3 stat line is pretty good. And then once he levels, does get that quick attack, which would be nice. And then he can start just absolutely annihilating the enemy. There's going to be specific situations where he can just... Remove so many units. Yeah, with Fury, you can do a ton of damage. Definitely has a mostly P and Z generic feel to the deck. Yeah, a bit. Warwick items, triple Stalker's Blades. Yeah, as far as items for Warwick, uh, Stalker's Blade will be nice. Ravenous Hydra will also be solid. And best is taking the Dog Spotlight. Yeah. We don't know Warwick's champion spell. That is a good call. And we don't know his star powers or the constellation. But let's actually go in game and try to look at. Uh, let's see here. We'll go see what relics we think would be pretty good. I think his power will be uh, missing key for him. Potentially, yeah. Uh, so we'll just grab our Morgana here. Let's start at the, the common relics. Z Drive prototype rerolls, always good. Warmogs seems fine. Really, though, Chameleon's always good, but Ravenous Hydra, this really will be the star of the show. Anytime you have a common relic, you probably want to throw this on. Let's actually get rid of these. Because when I'm summoned deal one to all enemies, that'll be great for just damaging them all, giving you a big contribution towards your level up, but then also... When you're leveled, all these units, you'll slowly work on killing, which I do like the fact that they're focusing Warwick on killing damaged enemies. I think that is fun because he's essentially werewolf going and hunting people down. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, the Rage Blade was an interesting choice by them. Dreams of Yordles could be nice for the spirit and the impact. Wicked Harvest might have some play. Because this could really level up your Warwick because you're dealing damage to all units. So any of your own units will also count towards your level up. So this would give you, yeah, level you up almost immediately depending on who's on the board. Then making everyone else damaged, not too bad for you.
Yeah, a lot of these effects, like round start, create a fleeting copy of me in hand. Since he's a pretty cheap champion, it could be okay, but we don't know what his champion spell is yet. So Warwick is like a PNZ Kindred. Kind of. I mean, Kindred, yes, has her mark mechanic, but Kindred would play very differently. Technically a post on LORX, but it's just the video. Okay. No new items on file. It should get the leaks by tonight and not tomorrow. I love doing leaks. It's just fun, exciting. Yeah, we'll be taking a look at... I assume most people, yeah, get them done before stream tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to be breaking down the patch notes and all the information that will have been revealed. The Collector could be good, actually. <laughs> Which is actually kind of hilarious, because I can't remember the last time I used this. 1-1, uh, one, one, when I kill an enemy, you earn 50 gold. So Warwick is going to be getting a ton of kills. So getting this on Warwick could be solid. And then also going for... Where is it? The Succubus brand. When I kill a unit, summon a random husk. Now, you don't necessarily have a lot of synergy with the husks, but you will be generating a lot of them because you'll just be constantly trying to kill targets, potentially every round. Stalker's Blade is a very obvious one. So, yeah, you drop him. He's going to be able to get strikes off. You're going to have to be a little bit careful because since you're dropping him so early the enemy might not have enough units for you to strike. Important to note, even though I doubt you want to, he's another turn one champ with five-star mana flow. Yes, definitely. Uh, Riptide Battery. If you could get the Plunder off... Doing a couple bits of damage could be okay, but honestly, I feel like you probably would just want to go for the Ravenous Hydra. Uh, Blade Rack could be nice. Make sure you're able to get attacks in and everyone gets the best trades, and even if they don't kill a unit, making sure that they damage a unit wouldn't be too bad either. Uh, Gale Force would be interesting. <laughs> Because since he has a solid play effect, him getting recalled, well, he do, he also has this really strong round end effect. So yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily want to recall him, so he can keep getting those strikes off. Double Riptide on Warwick, so you can cause board wide and Nexus damage. I mean, I suppose you could do that. Let's see, a lot of these, not really seeing too much synergy. Uh, the Beast Within, having Overwhelm, and he would get the 1-1 one, because one, he is a dog. Yeah, I'm trying to see here, and I don't think... I think Shock and Awe could be okay. This could help you level your Warwick a little bit faster. You don't have a lot of 1-drops. I think you only have, like, the... Jury rig as one cost and maybe the cost it casts, but any amounts of damage could be okay. I just don't know if you get enough value from this one. Living weapon actually could be okay with him since he's going to be one of those champions you're putting on the board right away. So if you want your Warwick to keep getting bigger, not necessarily terrible. And I think going up for a chosen also wouldn't be the the worst. Especially if you had some way to make sure your Warwick scales up. So if you had like Fury or something like that. Yeah, it's somewhat hard to evaluate at the moment. Death's Foil also not terrible since he doesn't get Quick Attack till later. But yeah, definitely the obvious ones are like Stalker's Blade. That will be uh, very nice for you. And then also going for... The Ravenous Hydra will be very good as well. So yeah, that's... That would be good. Warwick's Relic having Fury would make sense. Either that or his star powers. Yeah, if he had Fury, that would be very good for you. You'd get so much scaling off. And if he can have a way to get guaranteed Fury, then I think Chosen by the Stars would be pretty solid for you. But yeah, we still don't know 
what his champion spell is, which could really change a lot of these. Like, if he has a good champion spell, Echoing Spirit or Grand Challenge Counter Plan could be very valuable for you, but we just don't know. Although the thing we do know, sadly, is that his champion spell is not in his starting deck. Because in his starting deck, none of it is spells. So, or well, none of them are a unique card other than Warwick. They're all things that are already in the game. So that is a little sad. Unless Caustic Rift is champion spell, yeah. <laughs> we need to see a spell decide if Equin, Archangel, yeah, would be good. Hello, service. So yeah, interesting so far. Warwick looks like a cool champion. His deck, we definitely have some question marks about. It seems like it will work decently for his level up condition. But we'll kind of need to, to see his star powers, which they should drop hopefully in like five minutes. Uh, Lobo Oswald. Oswaldo. Thank you for the subscribe. Uh, his level up looks like a loot box animation. I mean, so the level up he has is just going to be the default level up all champions have going forward. Honestly, the general level up looks better than I anticipated. Yeah, I think it's for a general level up. I think it's fine. Five minutes, not tomorrow. I don't. They should reveal his whole package today, I believe. They just sometimes like to space it out a little bit. Yeah, as a champion, I think he looks pretty fun. Uh, maybe his stars are going to be like, damaged enemies take double damage. That's going to be wild. Yeah, like, star powers really change a lot, and we don't know what any of that is yet. And hopefully, I mean, since he's a little bit more of a generic deck, maybe he could be one of the champions that gets, like, a special five star. Maybe. Hopefully we get card lore at least. Yeah. I think the level up reminds me of the general constellation stuff. Yeah, that is, I would agree with that. And Bus and Bessa might have gotten some new cards. Copium. Yes, yeah, so in my last interview, I think I asked about that. About like if we'd get new cards with the other champions. And they said that with some champions going forward, yes, we would be getting new cards. It probably wouldn't be as many as Fiddlesticks, but they would get new cards. And so I kind of thought each champion would get like two to three new ones. Since Warwick didn't get any, I'm guessing it's going to be going to Ambessa, which is a bit sad because I think more Warwick cards would be really cool. Oh, this was an interview from like a month ago. I did an interview about last patch. I haven't done an interview since then. I think uh, Ambessa's general idea or the identity is better supported by Noxus than P and Z to Warwick's. Yeah, Warwick is a very unique champion for P and Z. The whole P and Z design, I don't think really fits like, obviously, there's the chem tech, but there's not a lot of cards to build around it. Whereas, like, Mbessa is just, okay, a Noxie in general, that's going to be super easy to make cards for. But that's the thing. Support cards for Warwick would have been really cool. Uh, Captain Antiheroes, thank you for the follow. It's really hard to give Warwick followers when he's just a wolf. A bit, yeah. I mean, maybe we could have seen other creations similar to him. Like, not necessarily wolves, but other just <laughs> crazy things that Singed made. Yeah, and Bessa will be tomorrow. Right now, we're mostly just uh, waiting for them to reveal his constellation. There was a cat with a big claw. That is true. That's, uh... 
Professor Von Yips. Or Yip. Blade Stance, thank you for the follow. But I think Warwick as a champion, I think Warwick will be fun. And, like, I I personally love strike playstyle, so that definitely fits for me. I think that is a very fun playstyle. And then his uh, deck, while it is a little disappointing, I think it will work. Yeah, it will work well. So I think that will be solid. All right, let's I'm just refreshing, seeing if they're dropping more parts of him since it's uh, 1130. While waiting, I have a question. I've gotten Rune Terra Nova. How good is Fiddlesticks without triple paid relic build? Uh, I think he's still uh, solid. Goodness. How do you feel about him? I think Warwick looks pretty good. I think his deck will work for definitely leveling him up and his playstyle, but it is disappointing that we're not getting uh, anything, any cards with Warwick. That's a little disappointing. So a bit, bit sad there. They definitely need to bring it together with his star powers and his, his constellation. But Warwick as a champion will be fun. The deck, I'm a bit disappointed by. It's kind of boring. So, they've done really well with all of the recent champions. So, I don't think it should be... Like, I have faith that they can pull this together. It is disappointing that, yeah, we don't have voiceover. And hopefully, yeah, we get card text. Not gonna lie, voice, voiceover animation or cards is really bad. If Ambest is the same, then devs will probably have to mute the timeline. <laughs> I wish they gave Warwick something more than Zonite cards. I mean, since they couldn't make support cards for him, I think they're just like, okay, we'll just make this work for his playstyle. And also, yeah, trying to go a little bit more thematic with it and make sure all his cards are just Zonite cards. Not joking that they might have to mute the timeline. I mean, yeah, there's all my replies when people reply negatively to lack of stuff. Yep, there's definitely going to be a lot of that. Like, it's understandable, both from the devs point of view and from the, the player base, because, yeah, they do have limited resources. They potentially might need to reduce the amount of new champions and just focus on bringing some of the current roster up. That way, uh, they can actually get voiceover and things like that going. But we'll somewhat, we'll somewhat have to see. Did you see my Twitter poll? I did see your Twitter poll. Yeah, from uh, what people, how many champs, champ releases they want, or what they want to focus on with them. I feel like his constellation is going to be something like converting all damage dealt into drain effects to fit his League of Legends playstyle. I mean, that would be interesting. I'm hoping that he might be one of those champions that we get uh, a special four star for, maybe a special. Oh, okay, we got stuff for him. All right, so Warwick, new champion. Can I make this bigger? Uh, it doesn't really work that well. Okay, so we see Warwick. We see his cards. All right, more of his cards. All right, his epic. Primal Howl. And we see his champion spell. So plus one starting mana. Round start, create a blood hunt in hand. Or if you already have one, reduce its cost by one. Oh, no, this is two star. Never mind. Did we skip one? Okay, we see them all here. Okay, my mouse sometimes skips over. Okay, so Eternal Hunger. Allies have one power for every seven times you've dealt damage this game. So since this is allies have, I think this should just be like an aura effect. So it's almost like a lurk mechanic that's scaling throughout the course of the game. The more damage you've done, 
the more you're able to scale up all of your units. So that is interesting. Uh, Primal Howl, plus one starting mana around start, create that Blood Hunt in hand. Or if you already have one, reduce its cost by one. We'll have to see. Uh, Eternal Hunger, rank two. Allies have one power for every five times you've dealt damage this game. So the same thing as the first one. It's just taking you less times to scale that up. Uh, Wounded Prey. So he does have a unique four star. When an enemy is when an enemy with two or more health is summoned, deal one damage to it. That is massive. That is really, really good. So as long as this isn't going to one shot a unit, this is just going to immediately kill them. It'll be funny to see how this works with the monthly challenges when things get set down to one health, if it calculates what their health would be. But yeah, this four star is massive. This is going to be really good for Warwick's level up. This is going to be really good for your three star. This is going to be fantastic for making sure just all enemy units are damaged. And then Warwick is going to get strikes off every round. So that is huge. Yeah, laughs and tough. Tough would be a counter to this. That's a good point. But that's actually our crazy four star. Mana flow, get an extra mana gem. Eternal hunger. Allies have one power for every three times you've dealt damage this game. When an ally kills a unit, heal it fully and grant it three health and impact. So yeah, this is Eternal Hunger rank three. So this is the first time we've seen a six star that's an upgrade of the three star. So this is going to replace the Eternal Hunger rank two. They're not going to work like concurrently. So now just every three times you've dealt damage, which you're getting one extra damage every time the enemy just summons a unit, essentially. Uh, but you're getting tons of free damage. Your units are all scaling up their power throughout the course of the, day, the game. And then when the ally kills a unit, so ally kills a unit, not an enemy. It's just, if you have, oh my word, you could use Warwick with like Disciple of Shadows or the one that deals damage to all units. Because whatever he kills, he then scales up. So you can kill any units, including your own, heal it fully, grant it three health and impact. So you have ways to fully heal your units, similar to Kane. So that's actually really big. This is, could be great for formidable. You also have ways to scale up your unit's power. So you can give power, health, and impact. I mean, the impact is kind of just like the cherry on top to give you more damage, because also the impact is giving you extra iterations of damage. The more impact you have, the higher your damage is going to scale. Because it's giving you more damage. All right, let's see whatever this Blood Hunt is. But this actually seems kind of crazy. So three cost fast. This is also his champion spell. So his champion spell is getting created every round if you don't have one. Deal one to a unit or nexus and one to another. So you're able to damage two things immediately. Then grant all damaged enemies vulnerable... So this is a grant, so this is a permanent effect. Most enemy units are already going to be damaged. So pretty much you don't need to go for uh, the Challenger, the Blade Rack, because with this, you can just make all the enemy units vulnerable as is. So all your units get the best trades. And this creates a Warwick in your deck. You could potentially go for an extra damage build with like Ludens or the big guns and actually go for some pretty big removal because this is hitting multiple targets so this is giving you vulnerable giving you more iterations of damage so warwick scaling is going to be crazy this forces the overwhelm power relic the scaling has to be massive yeah you might really want to get overwhelm although being able to make sure your units get the best trades you could have some of your smaller units grab their units, and then you could get blockers. So the Overwhelm will definitely be nice, but I don't know if, if it's going to be super needed. Region on Warwick to keep him for longer. Uh, if you don't have the 6-star, then yes, you might want Regen. Now, with the 6-star, you're able to heal up your units, so it won't be as needed. So that's not too bad. Uh, we need allies have quick attack relic now. Yes. Yeah, we don't know what his relic is yet. 
Because, yeah, this is just his two star. I don't think they posted his epic anywhere. If they don't, then I'm sure the data miners will grab that tomorrow. But yeah, these are cool effects. I'm glad he gets a special four star. This is going to be great for that. Vulnerable is quite nice, actually, with the six star. Yeah, he has a lot of very good effects here. Ravenous Hydra pre four star, maybe not necessary post. Yes, he's going to be you're going to be able to level him up very easily. I mean, the eternal eternal hunger buff is essentially an everywhere buff, but undispellable like Heimerdinger's. Yes, this should be like an aura effect that just all of your units, if they're on the board, they're getting this, even if the enemy tries to like silence them. Constellation bonus stars and deck upgrades to see how this plays out. Yes, those can make a really big impact. So we will have to somewhat see how this is going to work. Uh, regarding Warwick League, I have no clue. But as for boring as this deck is, we haven't seen a good few of the cards in any deck. I mean, there's only two of them, I think, that we haven't seen. Potentially, maybe three. And his playstyle is completely new as far as my wear. It's generic PNZ, but that's because the Zonites are all about uh, chip damage, discard, and the identity of the region. So I think he's fine as is. We can only hope the Constellation makes people pick him up. Uh, I'd say Constellation looks pretty good. I got a PNZ Nova. Would you say it's worth it to 6-star by looking at his list and deck? Um... I think Warwick is going to be one of the more interesting PNZ champions. From this, I think he looks like he is going to be pretty strong. Yeah, Chosen will definitely be good here. Yeah, I think he's going to be much more interesting than like Jinx or Echo, in my opinion. I think Jace is probably fairly interesting, but... Yeah, especially if you like scaling your units... I feel like Warwick could be pretty fun. Beast Within looks mandatory. Uh, potentially. With the Vulnerable, you might be able to work around it, but possibly. Uh, Apollo is usually the one who posts the Relic Extra Stars. Yes, I do follow him as well, so I should be able to get him. The Echo Slander. I mean, I said the same thing about Jinx. Jinx and Echo's 6-star are just kind of boring, in my opinion. Does Ravenous Hydra count as... One proc or one per enemy. I think it should be one per enemy. But let's look at this now considering uh, Warwick. So Warwick is going to be very easy to level. So you've dealt 12 damage this game. That's going to be very easy, especially when you have him at four stars. He does feel like a champion that since he has a special four star, it's probably going to be one you really want to pick up. So leveling him is going to be super easy. Just play, I strike a damaged enemy. The enemies, you should always have someone to strike. So that shouldn't be a problem. And then as far as his level up effect, which he's going to level very fast. Round end, I strike a random damaged enemy. This normally shouldn't be a problem for you. There's going to be very few cases where the enemy is not going to have a unit on the board. That's damaged for you to strike with your four star. Because with your 4-star, almost every unit is going to get damaged. Now, with Warwick, we are going to have some really good... Well, specifically with the 6-star, you're going to have some good uh, sustain. Because... Let's grab it right here. Being able to fully heal when you kill a unit. Your Warwick is potentially killing a unit every single round. So, even if he gets damaged, he can just heal up and then get stronger. Like his scaling on his units is going to be insane. And Warwick is really going to be one that just kind of snowballs out of control because your one, three and uh, six star, the more damage you do, the bigger you scale. And as you kill units, you scale up and get impact, which makes you do more damage to further increase your scaling. You also have your four star that's constantly feeding you extra damage. And the fact that it's only three times you've dealt damage this is going to be scaling up super fast. This is affecting your whole board. It's not just Warwick. Your two star is also giving you extra damage as well. Because this is hitting two different targets. 
Warwick star powers, I'm very impressed by. I think these are going to be fun. Uh, is it not 12 instances of damage? Not 12 damage. Uh, you've dealt damage 12 times. So yes, this should be individual instances of damage, not just 12 damage. So you want to get a lot of little picks of damage. So things like Ravnus Hydra, you're hitting the whole board for one damage will be good. Your four star hitting people for one damage will also be good. Your two star being able to hit two targets for one damage also will be good. All of that will be solid. Also having things like the used cask salesman that gives you two cost to casts. Those are both going to deal damage your, to your nexus and the enemy's nexus. So that's going to be four damage just from those. I think this is looking pretty solid. I'll be six starring him the moment he releases. I mean, I plan on six starring him uh, eventually. Two star gives control to actually put other stars to use. Yeah, his his star powers seem pretty good. Hey, Tino, uh, Mil Tino Milo. Riptide for the three damage pings of damage, potentially. Yeah, so we still need to look for what we're actually going to get as far as his relic. But now that we know this, let's actually take a look here. So I think Chosen will be pretty good because since you are scaling up, you will be able to get the Challenger Overwhelm regen. You'll get this to activate pretty quickly. If there is Fury, so if he could get Fury on his, uh, on him anyway. So if you could get that on like his Relic, that'd be nice. So that could be solid. Uh, Black Shield might not be bad to protect your units. I don't think Death's Foil is going to be as needed because you'll just be able to get a lot of healing on him. Uh, Challenger won't be as needed with the uh, two star. Fear Cleaving Axe, you could get some boost going. Uh, cease and Desist, I feel like you're normally going to play your Warwick before he's at that 10 power. So you would get the triple impact, but yeah, I feel like this won't work as much. Gatebreaker chase gun for the memes. <laughs> So some of these effects, though, like Disciple of Shadows or the Rare Relics that do essentially the same thing, Wicked Harvest, this actually could be really good. Because since you are damaging all units, that's giving you a lot of instances for your star powers. If Warwick happens to kill anyone, he is going to be then buffing himself up like crazy. So I think Wicked Harvest could actually be the play and... You might want to do this more than a Stalker's Blade. Possibly. Because this actually seems like it'd be pretty good. Is Frozen Tomb for double Warwick good? Uh, Frozen Tomb could be solid because if you then have two Warwicks that are both kind of chilling and both of them are just getting strikes off every round. Could be could be decent. Uh, Archangel plus Ludens to do two damage to two targets each turn. Possibly. I think that's a way that it can work for him. I don't think that's probably going to be his best build, but as far as specific situations or specific monthly challenges, like since we just did the monthlies, I'm thinking Warwick is going to be great for a lot of them here. Any of the ones that is like all units uh, are have one health. That could be really good for you, or especially the one that at the end of the round, all damage units die. Warwick is going to be uh, awesome there. Hextech Rifle, clearly the best. Uh, it won't be, I mean, it has a point to it. It's giving you some damage, so it's not like it's the worst thing in the world. 
Warwick is the one for where damage units die. Yeah, he's going to be super good for that. Loaded dice and double Z drive. So we high roll for Kale's kit. Yeah, I think I think he's going to be pretty decent. Beast within for the extra overwhelm and giving your Warwick a 1-1 won't be too bad. Uh, Mercy killings. Yeah, I think that's the one. Warwick's greatest enemy, tough. Yes, tough will shut you down a lot. That will be pretty pretty bad my bet is that warwick's epic give him brash and damage every time you attack yeah i think his star powers are very thematic and very cool and then we need to see what his relic is going to be because that could change things a lot as well hopefully he gets a really cool thematic epic relic because this is the thing his his starting deck I think it's going to work out well in game, but I do 100% agree it's a little bit boring. But honestly, that kind of doesn't matter because with some champions, you don't play their cards. Like when you're playing Nidalee, you're pretty much just playing Nidalee, especially when you have Nidalee leveled up. You're almost never playing your support package like at all. Like it's still cool to get them. But they don't really matter as much. And I feel like Warwick is going to be one where you're like, you're really playing Warwick. You're having a lot of fun with Warwick. And then the cards around you, it's not as big of a deal. I'm still a little bit disappointed we didn't get any unique ones with him. But I don't think it's going to be terrible. What do you predict his tier will be depending on uh, what we got so far? So he's going to be pretty strong. I think the amount of scaling you have here is going to be pretty crazy. And there's a lot of ways you can get this to go off even more. There's a lot of powers you can build around. Like every time you summon a unit, you do one extra damage to the Nexus. Any spells you play, you do one damage to the enemy Nexus. When one of your units die, deals damage to the enemy Nexus. But also anything that can give you some... Yeah, any, any amount of damage is going to be great for you. And I think you can scale up your units very quickly. You can also make them be a lot stronger. And you can choose who gets fully healed and who gets this health. Because you can give anyone vulnerable with this blood hunt. So with this blood hunt, you can choose who to heal your units. You can have great survivability. Your four star is fantastic. So if you go up against an enemy unit that has a lot of summoned units, they can just feed more damage into you, which gives you even more scaling. I think this is, I think he has the potential to be one of the strongest scaling champions in the game and have also a lot of removal baseline. He seems like a better Vi, kind of. I still have the option for the Constellation release bundles for Piltover at Nova. Should I get it for Kate or Warwick? Uh, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. I think Caitlyn's a lot of fun, and I think Warwick is looking like he'll be a lot of fun. But that will really depend on just your playstyle. Um, I'm just going to go with Hizzle. <laughs> Hizzle, thank you for the follow. I wish they went harder into the flavor of Warwick uh, than staying in the lines of P and Z. Only his spell giving vulnerable is rough. I mean, his spell's not just giving vulnerable. His spell is giving you damage on two units, including the enemy Nexus. And then getting the entire board vulnerable, which I think is a pretty big deal. Like, Warwick is going to have a lot of removal and a lot of scaling. Now, you're not really going to have any control other than just killing enemy units, but I think Warwick is bringing a lot to the table. And he also seems like a champion that you're really going to snowball. If you get ahead and you start doing a lot of damage, you're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And so against some of those opponents where there might be a longer match, you're just going to keep outscaling them. It's not going to matter. The longer the match goes on, the stronger and stronger you get. So I think it's, I think it's pretty good. His four star into Lissandra, I'm Inevitable, is actually a power for the enemy. Yes. But that's 
outside of that one specific situation. Uh, hello, Clear Wings. And yes, I think Warwick himself does look pretty fun. I'm hoping that in six minutes, when the hour rolls over, they drop some more info for us. Uh, we're supposed to get a new battle pass every patch. So yes. Uh, Enfeebling Strike will be nice on Warwick. Not that it's bad in general. Yeah. What about tough units? Our Nexus. Yes, tough is going to suck for Warwick. Anytime the enemy has tough on their units or Nexus, that is going to hurt you. Uh, the problem will be in Nightmare Weeklies where they almost always summon a 100-100 board turn one. I mean, I don't think I've done a single Nightmare in the weeklies where they summon a 100-100 on the board turn one, so I think that's going to be fine. Now, if the enemy has tough, so you're not going to get as much scaling, and then they also can outpace you with having a lot of units, uh, you could have a bit of a, a bad time. But the sustain you can get for your units with the Eternal Hunger... The fact you can give units vulnerable, the amount of removal, damage, scaling you have. Like, there's always going to be niche situations where a champion isn't the best. But in general, Warwick is looking very strong. I mean, a strong board one, turn one. I mean, that doesn't... A enemy having a strong board isn't that bad because you're going to be able to scale up pretty fast. If the enemy summons a bunch of units, you can immediately have your wounded prey start triggering right away because every time they're summoning units, you are immediately getting more scaling off. So it will be a bit that the tougher the enemy is in some regards, the stronger Warwick is going to become because you're going to have more targets to hit. You're going to be able to do more damage and scale up faster. The wider the enemy board, the better for Warwick. Exactly. So you're going to be in a situation similar to like Vex, where if the enemy has a lot of units, that's great for you. If they just have one really big unit, then that's going to be more of a struggle. Because, yeah, you want to be hitting more and more units. What do you think his relic will do? I have no idea. I'm not even going to try to guess. I mean, hopefully his relic gives him fury. If it gives him fury, he's then getting so much scaling, it's going to be hilarious. Should Enfeebling work with his 4-star? I mean, it should. It's damage. And if it's something like 5 units at game start, times 3 Hydra Harvest is actually insane. Yeah, like going into uh, Swain, he summons all of his units. As long as the ones that don't have tough... He'll be immediately doing damage to them. Warwick will. And then you can drop Warwick turn one or turn two, depending on if you have his five star. You can put on several of the like Wicked Harvest so he deals damage to the whole board. That going off multiple times. And you can start having it very quickly where all the units you're dropping are massive. Yeah, Harvest would also go through tough. The biggest thing with tough though is even if it's not completely stopping your damage, it's still going to be reducing it, and thereby reducing your scaling. If Warwick gets Fury on Relic, then you don't even need to bother with Yasuo's 4-star. Powers and Relic powers don't affect star powers. Uh, the power Your star powers affect powers, yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on which powers, but yeah. When posting leaks, should I skip Warwick's powers or just post them anyways? Less repetition and less images. Yeah, I would say if something's already been revealed, don't bother posting it. So we already have all of Warwick's stuff. If you don't see anything different, I don't know why you'd... It's not really a leak if it's already out there. So I would, I would hold off. So yeah, looking at Warwick, I think he is going to be... Pretty good. His starting deck, Boom Crew, it does have extra draw on it. You're going to be able to get some damage down with his effect. 
Clump of Wumps, the Puff Caps, again, it's giving you potentially more damage. So that's fine. You do have a lot of discard in here. You don't really have discard synergy. But if you needed to, you could always discard your Blood Hunt since you're making one every round. It's a thought, it's not crazy. The Caustic Rift and Kemp Punk Shredder, though, having multiple effects to hit the entire enemy board isn't too bad. And honestly, I feel like going for like big guns on Warwick or even like a Ludens, so all of your spells and skills are hitting a little bit harder, wouldn't actually be a bad strategy. Like that wouldn't affect your fourth star, but making your Caustic Rift and Kemp Punk Shredder actually being more of a board clear, increasing the damage from like your Boom Crew Rookie, just helping you scale up even faster, I think could be good. Yeah, Clump has double items, and so does the used cask salesman. If, I mean, that would be funny, it'd be too much, but it'd be funny if he had Shadow Totem. So you drop him, and he just completely fills your board, because two of him and then four of the uh, caustic casts. All right, it is 12. Let's go ahead and see if they post anything else here. I don't really know if they will. Like, they could post his relic. His relic would be cool. That's kind of the last thing, unless they show us any parts of his constellation. I feel like that would probably be something that uh, Apollo does later. Imagine bonus stars like Follows You Require have Ravenous Hydra. I mean, they could do that for support champions. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that there. Yeah, Warwick. I'm excited about him. I think overall it's a net positive. It is sad that we're not getting voiceover because I would love to hear what War uh, Warwick's voiceover would be. Also, I think he could have a really cool level up animation. So hopefully this game is just super successful. And in the future, they go back and give him one. All right, I'm not seeing anything else dropping. That's not too surprising. But yeah, overall, or overall, I think Warwick looks pretty good. I like that he's a cheap champion, so you can play him either the first or second round. That won't be... Uh, too bad. It is nice that he has a subtype, so you can get some synergy there, especially with like your Beast Within, so that can give him a little bit extra 1-1. One, one. He has the whole strike play style. I love strike play style, so that is going to be really fun. I was a little bit worried that his play I strike, or round end, I strike a damaged enemy, that you might not have enough ways to damage enemy units, but I think it's going to be fine. Jury Rig is kind of whatever. The biggest thing is because of your star powers, especially your, well, your 1, 3, and 6, since this is a board-wide effect, very similar to Pike and your Lurkers, even a one-cost unit can end up being massive at the end of the game. So your Jury Rig, while it is kind of whatever, as far as a unit, later in the game you drop this, it's actually going to be a threat. This could give you a lot of extra damage. Boom Crew Rookie... It is giving you extra damage on the Nexus. And I really do think Big Guns has potential because increasing effects like this could be good. Yeah, there's, there's things here that are a little random, but I think they're going to work for him. I think his deck will actually play pretty well. Also with the used, ca <laughs> used cask salesman, when you're summoning two of these caustic casts, Again, those will be able to get the buffs from your star powers, so they're not just going to be a 0-1 unit. They could potentially scale up and actually be a threat, so dropping this unit, especially later in the game, might give you three big units to attack with. Yes, Jury Rig has Invoke. Note that with Invoke on Jury Rig, you do have to play it. If you discard it, you don't get the Jury Rig to trigger. I think Warwick brings a lot to the table. 
You get a lot of extra damage. I think he's going to be a great pick for a lot of the monthly challenges. I think you have insane scaling. You have great removal from Warwick himself. The Blood Hunt, also good for that. And then the Vulnerable. This is actually really good. Enemy targets are not going to be able to escape you. Because either Warwick strikes and kills them, he strikes and kills them at the end of the round, or you just kill them with the Blood Hunt, or you give them vulnerable so then you can attack them. Like, Warwick is going to be one of the best removal champions, and I kind of like the fact that his removal primarily isn't based on spells. Warwick is going to be about hunting the enemy units down and killing them. And with Warwick, with the 6-star, when an ally kills a unit, fully heal it, and then you get the extra health and impact, but this is going to be great for Warwick because when he levels, he gets quick attack. So he can actually use that vulnerable and then again try to hunt down a unit. And even if he's taken damage, he can then heal back up. He's going to be a great unit for blocking because you can block with him, take damage, and then attack the next round and heal back to full. I think he's also going to be one of those that is very good for the strength of stone or anytime you have formidable because... If it's one of those effects like animated armor where everyone has formidable, you have so much damage to make the enemy useless, but then you have ways to f further buff up your units and heal them. So since we just did the monthly challenges, it's really on my mind. And I'm just thinking Warwick is going to be an awesome pickup for many different challenges. Like it's kind of been annoying that for the formidable, we don't have that many targets that it's really good with. Like, there's a couple, like, Kane, Vagar, and Vi are kind of the big ones. But Warwick is going to be another one that will really work out well there. I feel like Warwick will definitely have a level up animation. Maybe they're trying to cover Arcane spoilers for now. No, they said earlier that all the champions releasing are now all having a default level up animation. So the level up we saw, I think that's all we're going to get. Which is a little sad. I would love to be wrong about that, but I don't expect we're going to get a different one. Oh, I know a good and real one. Follows you, acquire, have quick attack. Yeah, I could see that. That's one that uh, Vayne already has, but yeah, I could see them doing that. Do we know when the patch drop and is Mel's mom dropping with him or a different patch? Yeah, so the patch is dropping on Wednesday and... Uh, Ambessa, Mel's mother, is getting revealed tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go and look at all the stuff about her. We're also going to look at all the stuff that got data mined. So any of the relics that are getting added. And then also uh, the patch notes. Also remember, they showed this in the video. I'll try to pull it up here. They showed that Warwick is going to be getting a... Ugh. I need to try to mute that. I hate that every time I go in. Anyways, here we go. So here you can see... Uh... Alright, so here's Warwick. They're showing him, but then we see a Warwick one-star adventure. Now, one-star is not that big of a deal, but a lot of people complain when the adventures are too difficult. So this will probably be more of like a story adventure. But still, another adventure. I'm happy with it. Another uh, place to go farm out some rewards. I think this could be f pretty fun. Are we going to get like another higher level adventure? Who knows? But at least something to go through I think could be fun. And as you see, he is focused in like Zon. Yeah, I think this could be pretty solid. Could also have a nightmare version. Yes, we'll have to we'll have to see. But yeah, he's it's cool that we at least know we're getting another adventure. Maybe we'll get multiple like we have in other patches where we got yeah, like three adventures, I think, at one time. I think he might struggle with running out of cards. Uh possibly, but he does have a good amount of draw.
So we know that the Boom Crew Rookie has extra draw on it. And then the Jury Rig has Invoke, so that can give you an extra card. And then the Sump Dredger, while it is making you discard, you are still drawing one. And since you're generating a card every round from your uh, Force or your Two Star, for one, this is giving you something extra to play to help you not run out of cards. So either you can play this every single round if you don't have other cards to play, or if you needed to, you could discard it with the Sump Dredger to draw another card. So I don't think it's going to be that bad. It's going to... Yeah. I don't think it should be too terrible. Uh, yes, you you missed it, Nitrous. So Warwick, three-cost champion. You can play him early. He's going to have a lot of strike mechanics from his play effect and his level effect. So if you like that strike play style, Warwick is going to be great for that. Uh, he doesn't have any unique cards coming with him, sadly, other than him and his champion spell. Uh, his deck is all Zawnite cards. They seem fine. It's It seems a little bit more function over... kind of aesthetic. I mean, the, the aesthetic that they're all Zawnite, but they're a little bit random. But I think they should work out pretty well. As far as his powers, he gets a unique 4-star that really ties everything all together. The 4-star is excellent. It's a really, really big deal. But then he's also a champion that has a unique 6-star. I don't think we've seen any other champion where their 6-star is a third rank of their 3-star. But he's someone that should have insane scaling from his star powers. You get extra damage as well as vulnerable from your 2-star. Overall, I think his star powers and his champion are really interesting. The starting deck, I think, will work, even if it's a little bit boring. I think it works. And really looking forward to seeing what he gets for his uh, champion relic and his uh, constellation. Kind of like Ash and Talia, they turn on once they get to the four star. Yes, the four star really helps bring everything together. It gives you a lot of extra damage for your scaling from your star powers, really helps your Warwick level. Make sure your Warwick has enough damaged units in order to strike. Overall, from what I have seen so far, I am excited. Yes, there are some effects that are a little bit disappointing. The fact that we're, we know we're not going to get voiceover. We know he's not getting a level up condition. We know that we knew that already. Sure, there's not too much for his starting deck as far as anything new. But Warwick himself looks like he's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm very happy with Warwick. And then... His star powers also look like they're going to be a lot of fun. I think this is great. I think he's going to be very unique to play. I think he's going to be a champion that's going to be great in the monthly challenges. I think there's going to be a lot of specific modifiers in there that you actually want to pick Warwick for. I am excited to play him. I think they've done a good job, especially with their obvious limited resources. Really excited to see what his uh, relic is. Yeah, I think he'll be a relatively simple champion, <laughs> but a lot of fun. Uh, Warwick is going to be great for uh, mercy killings, so any damaged unit dies at the end of the round. He is going to be like the best possible pickup there. Uh, we'll have to see how he works for... Anytime the enemy summons a unit, set its health to one. Because based on how the wounded prey, how it checks, this will either, either do nothing the entire game or it'll immediately kill their unit. Uh, even if this doesn't work for that, though, you have a lot of triggers for damage to ping the board with like your primal howl, the blood hunt, as well as some of the other cards you have to still kill enemies, even if that's the case. And then I think, especially when you have him at six stars, he is going to be fantastic for anything with Formidable. Yeah, I think there's going to be a good amount of situations where you're like, oh, I really want to drop my Warwick. Uh, I haven't seen the Relic info anywhere yet. What are your thoughts over here? He seems powerful, but I reckon he looks so bland. I don't think he looks bland. I think he looks like a lot of fun. 
Uh, no, the last. This is your uh, two star. So primal howl. Right here, it's just further explaining your two star. Yeah, when I first saw this, I thought the same thing. But yeah, this is just your two star because this is create a blood hunt in hand. We don't know what this is just from the two star. This is showing us what blood hunt actually is. Yeah, overall, I'm excited for Warwick. I think he's going to be going to be fun. The starting deck, I think it will work. I think the starting deck will be solid for him. Yeah, there's some cards in there we've already seen a decent amount of time, but there's some other ones like the used salesman caustic rift and the shredder that i don't think we've seen in any other deck so yeah i think overall it's a it's a w in my opinion is it a bad idea of adding exclusive path of champions champs i mean since that's the focus of the game now uh no <laughs> i was hyped to use that on swain now I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, that would be really good for Swain if that was just a relic. Warwick looks really fun, but I'm going to struggle to clear harder content with him. Uh, Beastman will help a ton. I think Warwick can clear harder content. I think you have enough damage and scaling that you'll be able to do all right. I do think he might be one of those champions that you really need to get the four star on. I think without the four star, he'll still probably do fine, but this will just give you a massive bump in power. Honestly, he just actually gets kind of crazier and crazier because the four star is huge. The five star means you can play Warwick turn one, also massive. And then the eternal hun hunger just gives you tons of scaling. I just want a relic that gives stats or some benefits when ally takes damage. Uh... That would be interesting, but I feel like that would just be Tom Kench's territory. Yeah, the four star is definitely very important. Similar to, like, Vex, Talia, and Ash. This is a four star you really, really need to get. Needing to get four star to come on, to really come online feels rough, especially if it's currency gated. If not, might be too bad. Remember, we're supposed to, we're always getting a battle pass. And in the battle pass, you will get resources to help you four star the champions. Now, yeah, especially getting the five and six star will still be a little rough. But normally the battle pass should help you get the champions four star. Warwick's four star would benefit. Also, Warwick, Warwick unleveled has low stats. So dealing one to him makes him even smaller, unlikely to survive a hit. That is true. Warwick, his stat line is solid. Like the difference early on between three and two is massive. There's a lot of effects that can do two damage to you. A lot of removal spells. Having that one extra health is pretty big. Warwick taking any amount of a hit to go down to two health makes him much more killable. So you'd want to stay away from damage in your Warwick, especially early on. Because, yeah, he could be a little squishy with that. Basically, in short war words, it's a PNZ Tom Kench. Yeah, that's the thing is, I don't really want them to do self-damaging. Because, yeah, Tom Kench already does that. I don't want a PNZ Tom Kench. You are misreading the four star. When an enemy is summoned, deal one damage to it. This is not your this is not <laughs> This is not hurting your own units. Yeah, you're not trying to kill your own units with this. You're just trying to damage enemy ones. All good. Happens to the best of us. Uh his desk his deck seems like it'd struggle to kill units. And you have your own survival to use the six star. Your deck doesn't have... I mean, you have some removal. You have your get excited. So you still have some target of removal right here. And this can target the enemy nexus as well. So you do have that. And then you do have some pings of damage. 
but really you're relying on Warwick for your hard removal. He's going to be killing a ton of enemy units. Honestly, he is going to be one of the highest removal champions in the game. Because he's getting a strike off when you play him, which you should be able to kill a unit most of the time because you can choose who to pick. I strike a damaged enemy. So you get to choose who you're picking. Also, this isn't a skill or anything, so this can't get shut down by like spell shield. So you drop him, he gets a kill. He should level up pretty fast. And then he's just striking a random damaged enemy every round. And then with the fact that enemies are getting damaged by wounded prey, he should always have someone to damage. And even if you don't have the four star, your two star is going to help because you can damage other units. So we have been saying how good the four star is, and it definitely is good. But I don't think it's actually going to be quite as required as we've been saying, because the Blood Hunt, especially in adventures, especially ones where they're not like nightmare ones, damaging two units, even every other round, is going to make sure your Warwick has units to hit. So even without your four star, I think your two star is putting in a lot of work for you. For the 6-star, you need a unit to not die to get the buff and heal. Yes, that is that is true. This is going to be a little bit harder. Like This is going to be great for Warwick. Some of your other units will have to see. Now, you do have board-wide vulnerable that you can give to the enemy. So you should be able to make the best trades and scale up specific units. And yeah, we do have the possibility that your constellation is able to give some of your units quick attack i like the flavor of this you need to make the enemy bleed yeah you're doing that a bunch yeah i like that we're actually going to get a removal heavy champion that is not focused on spells because we have some champions well most of our removal heavy champions are ones like Swain, Vex, Annie, those sorts of ones. And while those are fun, it will be nice to have a champion that really focuses on removal that isn't focusing on spells. I do really think, though, that getting uh, plus one damage with uh, big guns or going for Ludens... Nope, that's the wrong one. Let's see. Let's... Go in for, like, a Frozen Tomb and a Ludens. Could be pretty good. So you can get two Warwicks on the board, because you can drop one early, and then you get a second with Storm Stormcarve. Ludens Tempest gives you two extra damage with double Warwick. And then with the Ludens, this is going to make your uh, two-star the spell you're generating there do that extra damage, which could be really nice. So you could actually go for removal with your spells if you needed. But there's also make your Caustic Rift do a lot more damage. This would make your Kempunk Shredder also do a lot more damage. All that damage could really work in order to scale up your units even more from your three star. So I think something like this. Again, while I don't think this is going to be like the meta best build for him, I do think this is a build that can be fun. And if you want your Warwick to be more based on spells and skills, this would actually be pretty solid. If Warwick support kit has Blood Hunt, he'll probably be a neat Swain support. Yeah. You think they chose Warwick for Path because Ambessa is chosen of the wolf? No. I think they brought Warwick to Path because they teased Warwick at the end of Arcane Season 1. And because Warwick is a very cool champion and they know that a lot of people are going to want to get him. So he's already in Arcane. People know he's coming for Arcane. Like, the two people they chose since, since Season 2 isn't out yet and we don't know what other champions could be in there other than the ones that were already revealed they chose that two champions that were already in season one 
like Ambessa, obviously, in season one, and then in one of the final frames for season two, we saw Singed with like an we saw Warwick hung up. It was obviously there was it was him, so yeah, I think they just chose people that we already knew were going to be in the game more. We have one more new champ this year. Yes. So we're getting two right now. We had one last patch. There'll be a new one in December. And I'm thinking that the new thing we get in December, the new patch is going to be a second arcane patch. So this is the prologue patch because this is coming out a couple days before season one launches. Not season one, but the, the first episode's release. And then our next patch is going to be like shortly after Arcane is finished. And so I think it's going to be a second Arcane patch. And that's where I'm expecting us to get potentially like Victor. Or some unreleased, unconfirmed champion. Like people that are going to be in Arcane that we don't know yet. People that they're going to bring in that we didn't see. Praying something from Targon. Yeah, we'll have to see. Looking at his powers again, yeah, it is true that it's it's going to actually be a little bit similar to, like, Fiddlesticks. Where your, your 1, 3, and 6 star are scaling off the amount of times you've dealt damage, not how much damage you have dealt. So, similar to Fiddlesticks, where with kind of his, like, best build, you're just trying to go for as many instances of damage with going for the Shock and Awe, with going for the Nora Relic. You're just trying to do as much, as many individual instances of damage as possible. And so, going for, well, Warwick is kind of going to have the same play style. Now, you still might not want to do Shock and Awe because you only have, like, one one-drop. Yeah, you have your Jury Rig, and that's kind of it. Although, I think the Caustic Casts are... Actually, there might be zero costs. So yeah, baseline, you probably don't want to do Shock and Awe. Um, and you also probably don't want to do the Nora Relic, because again, that's only really going to help your Jury Rig, because you don't have a lot of creative cards. But you are going to be trying to do as many single instances of damage. So going for a build where you do extra damage with, with your Blood Hunt, no, that's not going to contribute more to your star powers. But... Just having this do extra damage to just flat out kill units or just contr or yeah help you kill units could be good and the same with like the damage from the Kempunk shredder and the caustic rift the extra damage isn't going to scale your units up more because it is individual instances but it is just going to help kill enemy units What's a good non pay to win uh, Fiddlesticks build? Uh, so going for Chemtech Duplicator isn't bad. Chemtech plus your Echoing Spirit. Also just going for flat out Overwhelm with the Beast Within. Pretty solid. Also going for something simple like Stalker's Blade. So when you summon him, he just gets some strikes off. Or going for uh, the thing that's good for Warwick as well. The Ravenous Hydra. Also decent. Yeah, the, the Chemtech build can be really good for Fiddlesticks, but if you have them at six stars, it's really not even needed. Honestly, if you have Fiddlesticks at six stars, it kind of doesn't matter what you play because he just stomps on everything. All right, I don't think we're going to get anything revealed in the next... Well... It's about to roll over the half an hour mark, so I think we're going to see if anything comes out there, if anyone posts anything. Yeah, the casks, I don't believe, are a mobile. I'll actually... 
I'll check that in game quickly. Alright, where was... Uh, we maybe didn't name it, so it's probably this one. Alright, so... For the used cask salesman... Yeah, your casts are a zero cost. But they're not immobile. So, since these aren't immobile, these will get your buffs from your star powers, where it says allies have, like, so much power, or allies have the extra health. So, dropping the used cast salesman in the late game is essentially dropping what's going to be three big units. So this is actually going to be a massive amount of damage to swing at the enemy. So this would actually... It would benefit from Nora's Relic, and it would benefit from <laughs> Misfortunes, because I think Misfortune does have the caveat that it's one cost or lower. Yeah, I think I'll... Again, check that quickly, but I think I think the Misfortune Relic has the caveat of one cost or lower. When ally that costs one or less. So yeah, technically you could go for a similar build. <laughs> uh, like Fiddlesticks, I don't think it would be quite as effective. But again, just trying to go for Shock and Awe and the Nora Relic to get that extra impact as well as Shock and Awe to trigger to just get more instances of damage. Yeah, the Yips Genius is the one that goes to um, only a one cost. Yips, if you reduce your champion lower, it doesn't help you at all. All right, I think that's where we'll uh, leave it for today. We're going to be covering all the stuff that gets revealed tomorrow as well. So we're going to be covering Mbessa. We're going to be going over the patch notes. And then we'll probably be going over also the Epic Relics because normally those get data mined uh, the day before. So we'll be going over all of that tomorrow. Overall, I'm excited for Warwick. There are some things that obviously could be potentially a little bit better. I thought that Warwick was going to get at least one to two support cards so that's kind of my big biggest disappointment but overall i think the deck will still work out pretty well for warwick i don't think it's going to be like oh worst deck ever i think it should be fine his star powers very fun really happy he got a unique four star and also kind of a unique six star we've never seen a third stack i don't believe i think warwick is going to be a fun champion and honestly for a lot of champions especially ones that are like a three cost, you don't play their support cards almost at all. Like I'm thinking for Vayne specifically, she's a three cost champion that your support package, you almost don't play at all. You drop, you drop Vayne, she ends the game. Warwick could end up being in a similar situation. So even him not having necessarily as many support cards shouldn't make as big of an impact. Overall though, I'm excited for Warwick. And we'll definitely be covering him as soon as he launches. I'll probably be getting his entire constellation. I won't do it immediately because I do like to test him at the different stages. But I think overall, great reveal. Anyways, thank you all for hanging out with me today. We'll be back here tomorrow, same time, going over all of the stuff, including the uh, patch notes. Yeah, hope to see you there. See ya.